Hello and welcome back to the Tippy Show. Today is day 15 of my uh, way for every day from the 1st till the uh, 25th. I miss some some days, uh, so I will I don't know, probably make the challenge a little bit longer, a few days longer, uh, to make up for the days that I missed. I've been working on a communist China guide and I'm, I'm ready to, to finish it up. We will be taking all of our cores except the treaty ports, defeating Japan, uh, and helping the Soviets destroy Germany. Uh, that is the goal. Yeah, I hope you guys enjoy this video. Okay, Communist China. We start out in a pretty interesting situation. We are nestled in between Shaanxi, uh, Zibei Sanma, and China. We have a pretty decent leader who has division recovery rate plus 10% and division defense plus 15%, which unfortunately will be going away uh, fairly quickly. We also have aftermath of the long march, uh, which gives construction speed negative 50% and factory output negative 15%. Uh, that's devastating. We have low popular support, which is negative 18% stability and war support. Uh, power struggles, which affects all of our laws. Red Army weakened, which we need to get rid of before we go to war with Japan. So to begin with, we're going to be training up as many of these divisions as we can. We're going to need two full armies of 24. Army 1 and Army 2. All of our factories are going to be going on guns for now, and we're going to start making some railways just like this. Research wise, we're going to research train as well as truck and land distribution. Uh, we're also going to be buying steel so we can make guns a little faster. Okay, and whenever you have divisions ready, just pop them out, add them to your armies. You're going to need two armies of 24, like I said. The Yan'an base area is going to give us two infrastructure. Okay, we're going to be justifying a war goal on Xinjiang. Uh, you have two options. You have the Conquer Wurgle or the Retake Core State. The Conquer Wurgle takes longer and generally gives more uh, world tension and the Retake Core takes uh, half as much time and it's actually cheaper as well. Also the Wurgle will never go away when it's a Core State versus if you just try to claim a state uh, the Wurgle will go away after two months and you'll lose some stability and war support because your people don't like when you back out of a war. So let's justify using Retake Core State. And I'm going to get this army morale genius. Uh, he's going to give us 0.40 daily army experience, which we're going to need a lot of. Focus on China, armor train, and we're going to get this academy scholarships. It's going to uh, make all starting level for new army leaders plus one. Uh, it's going to make army leaders uh, cost less. New generals have no personality traits when gained on hiring. I love that. We're going to be getting a lot of new generals. The generals we start out with are not bad at all, but we're going to need a lot. And I like uh, making my own generals whenever I play China. Type 24 rifle. And let's exploit the weak neighbors. This is going to give us an annex war goal against Shaanxi and Zibei Saimon. Our war goal is done. We will not be using it just for now. Okay, exploit the weak neighbors is done. We're going to enforce the three rules and declare war on both Shaanxi and Saibei Sanma. And this is going to be micro intensive. So we now have our war goals on Saibei Sanma and Shaanxi. This is how the front lines should always look. Um, it has been consistent through the last three or four years that I've been doing this strategy. It has not changed. Shaanxi will have two units here and usually one unit here. Zaiwei Sanma will have two units here and sometimes one unit up here. Most of the time it'll just be two down here. What we're going to be doing is declaring war on both of them at the same exact time. This part is completely optional. I'm going to be justifying a war goal on Tibet. Uh, you don't have to do this. I just like doing it because it makes my borders look a little better. We're going to have these three men pin these two guys down and these guys will pin this one down. Then we will micro and take as much of Shaanxi as we can. Uh, the thing you need to know about Shaanxi is they only have one victory point. Uh, the rest of it is just tiles. So you have to take a ton of tiles if you're going to uh, be able to capitulate Shaanxi. Pin that division down. Okay. And the thing about uh, Zaibei Sanma here is they have a ton of victory points. So you need to take all of them in order to capitulate them. Um, thankfully, it's not too difficult. They don't have too many divisions. You just need to snake around them. The hardest one to take is these two right here, um, just because usually they have a couple of troops inside those tiles, but it's not too difficult to uh, beat the enemy off of them. Ok, 
Okay, and these divisions will pin. Our next focus is going to be enforce the three rules. This is going to give uh, a little bit more stability and more support by, modify by modifying that uh, low popular support. So far, so good. Rush down here and take as many tiles as you can. I want you to go through here. They went off the tile. Let's see if I can't take that capital city. Oh man, I'll be so happy if I can. Let's get support equipment. Ah, oh, goddamn strikes. Just gonna plop down one military factory for now. Man, strikes are so unfortunate. Shangxi has capitulated, and we're just gonna straight up annex everything and move the task force from Shangxi on over to Zaibei Sanma. Full attack. Okay. Take tiles, take tiles, take tiles. Come on, come on, come on. Sweet. Okay. Uh, I suggest taking the unit that takes the capital city and giving them a fallback order so that they don't leave because usually the unit will leave the capital city and <laughs> you'll, you'll lose that uh, the victory point and then it, it, it's going to be a pain to retake. Take it, okay, pen, pen, and pen. So that's how you bait to be able to take a, a, a tile. And there you go. Annex the entire thing. And it is time to point our entire army and put them on sinking. Let's also plug in all of these railways. Uh, I know that you can do, I believe it's just like shift click. I, I honestly don't know if someone knows, please write it in the comments for someone, for anyone else that wants to know, but I like to, to draw it myself. I know that some people don't. Um, I find it very relaxing. Where the hell am I going? Ah, right there. I find it very relaxing. I find it fun. Kind of planning out my, uh, my own little train routes. Okay. I like that. We're going to start working on our uh, train, train tracks. Yeah, I like that. I like that. That is unfortunate. I hate strikes so much. I hate strikes so much. <laughs> They're so annoying. Um, this focus used to be good. Now it's... Eh. It's okay. It's okay. We'll get some consumer goods. Negative 40%. This used to be able to bring you down to uh, zero consumer goods. Now, because it's uh, consumer goods are hard capped at 10%. Yeah, it's not as nice now. Paradox, please put it back the way it used to be. I was so happy. I'm gonna research interwar airframe and we'll be declaring war now. Every single game that I've played in the last three years, Frontline has always looked like this. They have four divisions here and no uh, divisions on these tiles. What you're going to do is use this pin, this pin, this pin, pin, Pen. Pen. And then we're going to have our divisions enter here in the uh, south, uh, north. Also, we'll be attacking field marshal attack. We need to move and take this victory point here and move up and take the capital city. Take that victory point. Oh my lord. Construction one. And let's abolish the land rent. It gets rid of that low popular support, giving us stability and war support. Hopefully that'll end the strikes too. Is that not enough? Oh, nope, not yet. There we go. Sin Kang has capitulated. Take everything because it is your core states. And now we'll bring our army down here. We still have... Yeah, 100 days before the war with uh, Tibet. There we go. Widespread strikes are gone. Oh my god, that was annoying. I'm gonna get Professional Army Corps. I always like Static Warfare. And now strengthen the Central Secretariat. 
Chiang Kai-shek arrested in Guangxi clique. Li Zhongren has sent a message saying that he is arrested, Chiang Kai-shek is willing to turn him over to us. This may be the best chance we'll ever have to execute this enemy of the people. No, we are going to ally with him against the Japanese. Yunnan has joined. Guangxi needs to join as well. Come on, man. Oh, nice job, Amelia. 1936 small airframe. Okay, whatever. Bring our army on over. Not into China. Not into China. Agrarian socialism. And I am now going to leave the faction. <laughs> Guangxi clique didn't join, unfortunately. They might still. Okay, well, most of my army has arrived. Uh, I'm just going to declare war on them now. And we're going to be pushing with our units here. 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 Yeah, just like that. And these units will be... Actually, want half going here and force attack. We should chew through these units. I don't want to say quickly, but door with Tibet is very, fairly easy. Um, you use the majority of your units over here to make some real pushes into the capital city because you have a uh, supply depot over here, but you don't over here. Yeah, and if you take their capital city, you just need to take like six more tiles and they capitulate. Construction too. Majority of our army is going to be marching over to the capital, and a small uh, detachment is going to pin right here. Reunification campaign is going to remove power struggles. There you go. Easy as that. I'm going to annex the entire thing. And I'm going to be setting this onto civilian oversight because I want them to gain uh, compliance. It gives me access to more factories, uh, resources, manpower. I don't need manpower, but I like access to it. And let's bring our army on over. Come with your civilian trains, improve worker conditions. Uh, if you don't know, if you research armor trains and then you do that, come with your civilian trains. Instead of getting 15 normal trains, you get 15 armor trains. Very handy as a small nation, because armor trains get bombed less. We are now going to do Maoism, which gives us more stability, and it's going to make infantry equipment 10% cheaper. I'm going to move on to superior firepower. Sure, mass assault doctrine is good, but superior firepower is much better. Let's also get ground support, so we can start getting some uh, Navy experience. Uh, uh, oh my... God, Navy experience, air experience. So we can start getting some air experience. <laughs> oh, I'm so tired. Okay, literacy programs. Let's get another research slot. Okay, we're going to put one supply depot right there and yeah, one right there. Okay, now we're going to reorganize the railway system. Uh, hopefully we should be able to finish with these two before this is done. Artillery. Oof, losing my voice. Also, I am going to get some more generals. Uh, I think we're going to need a lot of them. Generally, I do use a lot of generals when I play as China, so just going to recruit a whole bunch of these generals. Might as well, when I can get them good and uh, without traits. We're now going to do infiltration, and with our extra research, research slot, we're going to do production. Oof. Nope, we are not going to make it. Uh, what I will do, though, is move on to... Yeah, we don't have a lot of resources, uh, so I'm going to move on to free trade, which is going to give us 15 plus construction speed, uh, 10 plus research sp speed, 15 plus uh, dockyard, and factory output. Since we don't have a lot of resources, it does not matter. The boosts are very much worth it. Going to come at your civilian trains again. We're going to need a fair amount of these. Or otherwise the Japanese will just bomb them. Revolutionary Military Commission. Sweet artillery. This person industry one. Central uh, Military Commission. And a machine gun. And I can finally go on to war economy. 
but I'm not going to do that yet. I'm actually going to be moving on to extensive conscription because service by requirement, look at that. It gives construction speed negative 10%, factory output, dockyard output negative 10%. Oof. Uh, we have enough manpower as it is. We don't need those debuffs. There we go, 10%. And now, People's Liberation Army, get rid of that Red Army weekend. Okay, prepare for war with Japan. We are legitimate, legitimately going to be preparing to go to war with Japan. We're going to make our infantry divisions an 18 width and switch it all over to that. Uh, and since we are a communist nation, uh, it's only fair that we have a nice star symbol. Bombs. And I can design a fighter. Engine 2. And two light machine guns. This is a beautiful model. I like it. I like the color. I like the red. I like it. Okay, support artillery, anti-Japanese expedition. We're going to justify a war goal against uh, Mankuko here. It's going to last for 105 days, uh, and it is a retake or state war goal. And now aircraft construct construction. Oof, oh my god, I'm so tired. Now I can finally move on to our economy, and I have the lowest consumer goods I can get to. Negative 10. Can't get any lower, unfortunately. Paradox, please, if you're watching this video, <laughs> change it back. I used to love getting to zero. It, only certain nations could do it, and that's what was so special. Okay, I'm going to be making a new cast design. This is what it looks like. I, yeah, you know, it's not bad. We're going to do a non-aggression pact with the Soviet Union, and we're going to improve relations with them. Also, we're going to improve relations with Sweden, and we're going to join the uh, common turn because we're going to need Soviet help for sure. Going to rush into uh, Japan as aggressively as we can take as much of these states. Uh, Beijing is big. Just need to make sure I take uh, these states right here. Hopefully, the uh, Russians send a bunch of help. Let's do mobile warfare. It's going to add mobile warfare, which gives us division attack on core territory plus 20%. That is big. Take that state. Keep moving. Keep moving. I'm going to call them to arms against the uh, Japanese. See if they can't uh, help over here. Nope. Take uh, Zihang Bay. I think that's what, how it's pronounced. Yeah, it looks like we won't be able to take Beijing. Um... You know, I'm not going to be making fighters right now. We really need guns. We really, really need guns. Okay. Army 1 to defend here. We are not going to be pushing into the Japanese because they're going to have a ton of units here. Um, I'm just hoping that the Soviets send some help ASAP. Our army will be putting here. And they will be pushing. Let's take Tanjin. Soviets want to send us guns. <laughs> yes, please. Yeah, until the Soviets can send uh, reinforcements down here, this is going to be a losing battle. Also, I was successfully able to take Beijing and Tanjin. Going Z-Click joined the uh, Chinese National Front. That's going to make the war in uh, China so much easier. Um, because you just have to capitulate China in order to get Yunnan and Guangxi as well. I need to try to capitulate uh, Manchuko. Ooh, Manchuko has capitulated. Okay, we're going to be making uh, researching air launch torpedoes. Uh, we're going to need to sink a lot of the Japanese Navy if we're going to be able to do any kind of naval invasion of the uh, Japanese mainland.
Okay, China Medical University. Okay, improved air launched torpedoes. And let's start making some uh, torpedo bombers. And we'll set these guys on a port guard. Okay, let's keep building some uh, military factories. We're gonna need a lot of these. Okay, army two, we'll be using to push a hole, hopefully, up here. And let's build some airfields here. Invite foreign investors for two extra civilian factories and excavation two. Uh, continuous strike and dive bombing. There we go. Force attack, let's see if I can't uh, do any pushes. Okay, we need to take this supply depot and then if we can take that one as well. And the Japanese have no supply. And we will now take that supply depot, starve the Japanese line all across the, here. Yeah, production efficiency gain. We're gonna need a lot of guns. Uh, our Air Force is ready. Got a couple bombers, uh, naval bombers and some fighters. So we're going to port strike. Naval patrol, all that, and bomb them. Experimental mechanized unit. Ooh, our fighters are much better than theirs. But we need a lot more of them. Electronic engineering. Combined arms warfare. Going to be deleting that tank because it's trash. Okay, I'm also going to research paratroopers. Yeah, we'll see if we can make some paratroopers. Imperial Legacy. Okay, we can attack pretty aggressively. I'm gonna force attack all across the line. Let's take Nanjing. Ooh, we're finally starting to sink some of their ships. Okay, I'm gonna prepare a naval invasion. And we'll be landing right here. Okay, uh, now we just need to wait for the Americans. Okay, so that my paratroopers uh, have been researched, so I'm gonna start making some uh, transport planes. We don't need that many naval bombers. There we go. Japan just declared war in the United States. So what we're going to do is immediately jump over here and Offer docking rights, offer military access, non-aggression pact, set a naval invasion, and hopefully the Americans can send some ships over here. Form the Academy of Sciences. More industrialist. Okay, and I'm going to start making some dockyards, just in case I'm not able to uh, pair drop. That way I can start making a fleet, and maybe along with the American fleet. I have full naval supremacy, so I can't... Oh, our, our naval invasion is off. There we go. Um, the American fleet and our fleet is making some moves here. So here we go. Bring over all of our forces. We have landed in Japan. Let's see if I can't cut the country in half real quick.
Can I take Nagasaki? I definitely do not need more uh, naval bombers. I am going to need cast though, if we're going to beat the Chinese. Engine three. Small Bombay, small Bombay, and die breaks. Molotov Ribbentrop has been broken, so the Soviets are now going to be very distracted fighting against uh, the Axis. Engineer Company 1, and let's also close off this position here. Nice. Japan has capitulated. Um, so we are going to focus on annexing our cores here. Take all, close. Okay, there we go. There's a Soviet Japan, a Chinese Japan. Got Chinese, uh, oh, I puppeted Japan inside Korea. Okay. And then there's a Democratic People's Republic of Korea. Okay, make sure all of our railways are plugged in. And we're going to create a, an intelligence agency. We don't need these paratroopers anymore. Um, we're now going to be making 48 of these divisions. Can I make 72? Okay, one China policy. It's going to give us war goals on China, Guangxi, and Yunnan. Okay, and put these guys on our border as well. Um... I am going to actually have my army, my main army, just assault from this position here. Keep making spies. Um, we will also be getting this elusive gentleman for another spy. Gonna add an artillery line to our uh, pushing divisions. I should be able to afford one more. That's gonna make uh, me taking this right here much easier I also we're not making any more of those don't need them I do need a lot of cast though a lot of cast a lot of cast artillery okay there we go and we're going to be giving our troops max supply with uh, fire trucks and I need to take all this perfect our first spy will be putting on Beijing Okay, we're holding over here with uh, the Soviets are holding. Yeah, okay. I mean, I'm going to help them for sure. I just need to finish beating China. One China policy is done. I have already conquered Tibet. <laughs> so let's bypass this focus. Okay, we're going to proclaim the People's Republic of China. Uh, you know what, I'm not going to do this until I actually beat the uh, the Nationalists. So let's do this for now. And no guarantees. I'm going to declare war on China. We will not be calling in the Soviets. The Soviets, I don't think, are uh, ready to help. They're, they're kind of doing their own thing down there. Okay. I will also be moving over to this operations. Launch 100 uh, regiments offensive. It's going to give division attack on core territory for 180 days. Uh, plus 25%. And lastly, I will be force attacking in the north here. So that I can very quickly take Beijing. If we can secure the north and get all these factories that, uh, that I was building... Uh, that's going to really hinder the uh, the Chinese, the nationalists. 
Yeah, and the Nationalists are starting to push over here. That's fine. If they push us some here, uh, we'll deal with it. But our main priority is going to be securing the uh, utilized domestic film industry for more uh, war support and improved worker conditions. Railway gun is done. We have almost taken Nanjing. Come on. There we go. <laughs> okay, we're just gonna keep making airfields. Sweet. Changdi is ours. Meaning the supply depot is ours as well. 99%. There we go. Select all. Select all. Select all. Annex everything. There we go. There you have it. We have liberated all of our country. We have beaten the Japanese. We have beaten the nationalists. We have taken back all of our cores. The only states we don't own are going to be these uh, free trade ports, but you don't need that for the achievement. In nine days, I will be doing Proclaim the People's Republic of China. We will be moving the capital, a Chinese capital, with the end of the Chinese Civil War. It is time for us to consolidate power in China and show the people that we are the modern incarnation of the Middle Kingdom. We are the state that will guide them into the future. To this end, we should have a capital befitting our great state. Uh, we can move our capital be to Beijing, Nanjing, or just keep it where it is to at in uh, Yan'an. Now we're going to do Beijing, of course. And I'm also going to be getting uh, more aluminum. Okay, let's move our forces on over to uh, the Soviet Union. With victory over the nationalists, it is time to take our rightful place as the legitimate government of China. Much work still remains to be done, but the future looks brighter than ever. I'm going to be updating my division, removing one of these artilleries. And switching my entire army over to that. Ooh, that is expensive. But... I, I'm gonna need good forces to hold the line against uh, Germany. Let's upgrade our rifles now. We are now the People's Republic of China. We have a new flag. And now, the socialist market economy. It's going to remove the final re recovery from the Long March debuff, and it's gonna grant us a couple of well, it's going to grant us one infrastructure, uh, one political advisor who is decent, but we're not going to be needing him. I would like a couple of railway guns for sure. Okay, I'm happy with this. I am happy with this. You know what? I am just going to help the Soviet Union now. I have been sitting here doing nothing for like three years. Um, and it has nothing to do with the fact that the Allies have made a massive landing and are going to end the war quickly. <laughs> so, okay, Soviets, I am here to help. The German lines are collapsing in an epic way. Let's take Minsk. So every single game I've played, late game, there's always a civil war in Bulgaria. Is I, I've never noticed this up until now. Is this like a normal new thing that happens? Yeah, we've 
We're getting close to winning. Just gotta continue bashing through them. We have enough manpower. We're good on our guns. Yeah, we, we, we can keep going. Oh, war's over. Okay, the war is over. <laughs> we got Chinese Germany. The British Occupation Zone. The American Occupation Zone. The Soviet Occupation Zone. Uh, Soviet Union. Puppeted Poland. You know, this isn't too bad. I did also end up taking the uh, German and Italian fleets. Let's see what all, uh, what, all, what all I got. Not bad, we have a very small fleet. I am making more ships. Holy shit, I need steel. Um, so China will soon be able to rule the Pacific as well. Okay, yeah, that's, that's gonna be the end of the video. Thank you guys so much for watching. Have a great rest of your day.